I am um, the project manager for Mario's coaching program, and I work in a couple other capacities for him. Um, I'm also the Etsy coach for our group coaching program. Um, I'm just jumping on here to talk to you guys a little bit about hiring a copywriter on Upwork for your Shine On stores. Um, so let's get into it. So to start, um, we're looking at the posting that I used myself when I hired when I, when I've hired copywriters in the past, um, and this is how I found one that we've been using for a couple months who we really really love. Um, so just to start out. I listed this posting in the creative writing category. I believe that you're going to have more success there versus doing it under the copywriting category. In my experience, copywriting, people who are going to go after more copywriting positions are people who maybe have more experience writing copy on like a commercial or professional level. When really, when we're hiring a copywriter for these shine on messages, we want to find someone who can really connect on an emotional level with our potential customers. And we also want to find someone who's going to have ideas that were, would not be obvious to us, right? So we can only do so much of our own copywriting. Um, having another perspective, a different person with a different life experience, different relationships they can draw on to create those messages that really resonate and pull heartstrings. That's really what we're looking after, looking for. So what I like to do is go under the creative writing category. That way we're going to find people who have, you know, that, who are looking for jobs that are more creative and can work in that space better. So what I did, I just put as my title copywriter wanted for writing message cards Hallmark style. Um, of course, not everyone's to know what a message card is in the traditional Shine and Shine on version of that, um, but this worked fine for me. Um, I like including Hallmark style because it does kind of, it's a quick way to sort of uh, show potential hires that this is something that's going to be like kind of emotional um, and have that like greeting card vibe. So um, I only hire freelancers in the US. Um, you certainly can open that up to other countries. You may have more success finding people within your budget abroad, but for writing, I like to try to find people who are more likely going to be native English speakers. So that's where I put that setting. As far as what I put in the body of the posting, I wrote looking for a creative mind to write message cards for our jewelry store. Ideal candidate is able to pull on heartstrings and crack a joke or two. Potential for long-term work if we're a good fit. Added bonus familiarity with shine on print on demand products and style. Again, if I were to go back and do this a second time, I don't even know if I would add that last line. I'm not sure that it's totally necessary. And in fact, maybe you don't want someone who's familiar with shine on. Maybe you want someone who is going to produce writing for you that is really far removed from the like same franken quoting style that we see over and over again. So maybe you don't want to include that. Um, so I go ahead and put in entry level. Um, again, I don't feel like I need to find someone who is like an experienced professional copywriter. I'm looking for more of a creative mind. Um, it's going to be less than 30 hours a week. I put less than a month initially. What I recommend doing when you're hiring copywriters is to hire a handful. Hire them for a couple hours, maybe just two to three hours of their work, so you can get a sense of their writing and that can help you make a decision. You don't want to really like commit to someone right off the bat. You want to have a chance to really see if they're going to be a good fit for you, if they're producing the kind of work you, that you want. My range that I listed is nine to $15 an hour. Again, this is up to you and up to your budget. What I've found is that you will find copywriters who their profile may say that their hourly rate is a lot higher and they may still accept this job. So when you're looking for potential candidates and if you're going to invite people to the job, don't shy away from people whose hourly might be higher. You know, they may take the job. In fact, our copywriter who we love has a much higher hourly rate on her profile than what we've agreed to. And, you know, from their perspective, of course, like I would want to list a higher rate on my profile too. And that doesn't mean I wouldn't be available for other jobs. Okay. So now we go down, um, again, this is a one-time project. I like to hire them for maybe two or three hours. When I was hiring the first batch of copywriters, 
what I'd like to what I like to do is hire them for a set amount of hours versus asking them to produce a set amount of messages. The reason I do this is I like to see how much they can do in say two hours of work. Um, what's their natural flow like? Um, you know, if you ask someone for say like 15 messages, maybe they are going to use more than two hours to write that and you wouldn't have any way of knowing that. If you just ask them to spend two hours writing, you can kind of see like, are they going to be able to produce a lot more quickly? Um, what are you going to get for that hourly rate? So what I like to do is I hire those people. I'll tell them like, I want you to write for two hours and you know, that way I can see what they're going to do. Now there is an option on Upwork where you can provide like a custom question. The one that I used is, can you use your own personal relationships as inspiration to create meaningful, unique messages for customers buying gifts for their loved ones? Now, sometimes you'll see other Upwork listings where someone will say like, provide an example. I worded it this way intentionally. By asking someone, can you use versus like, can you provide me an example of this? This gives someone the opportunity to either go above and beyond or be sort of lazy in their response when they send you a proposal. So someone may just write yes, but then I had other submissions who, you know, went on to elaborate like, you know, like I have six brothers and sisters and I feel like I can use that or, you know, like I just got engaged or something like that. It gives up someone an opportunity to stand out and that helps when you're narrowing down responses and proposals and it, it ultimately saves you time. And that's something to really keep in mind through this whole process. When you're hiring work out like this, the goal is ultimately time management. Also, you know, you want to get good copywriting so that you can have message cards that perform well, but you're also paying someone else so that you can work on higher level things for your store. Um, so if you find yourself in a situation where you've hired a copywriter who is just a complete time suck, you're having to do a lot of handholding, you're having to do extra training on top of like giving them a reasonable amount of direction, that might not actually be the best fit for you. Um, you really want to find someone who's going to be able to take prompts from you, take you know inspiration that you might send them and run with it and produce quality work weekly or bi-weekly, whatever works for you. Um, so again, going back to this, this is just a chance to really give someone an opportunity to stand out, which will help narrow down your search. Um, some of the, you know, more basic stuff is pretty self-explanatory when you're doing that listing, like, you know, English, you need them to have English. Um, and there's options where you can do, you know, under creative writing, you can do like blog writing or anything like that. I would just keep it simple um, when you're doing the actual posting. So this is what this looks like as far as finding a copywriter on Upwork. Um, don't get discouraged if it takes a couple of rounds of hiring people for an hour or two. Um, it may take a little while to find someone who is a good fit, um, but I highly recommend doing this. If you find someone you really like, it's also a good idea to continue to search for people on Upwork and maybe even having an additional copywriter who works for you maybe once a month we never want to completely rely on somebody else, right? So if you had an excellent copywriter and you have this great workflow going for your business and then they disappear off the face of the earth, we don't want that to bring your entire business to a halt. So it's a good idea to keep maybe a backup who you throw work to every once in a while and just kind of keep them in the fold. Now, once you find someone that you want to hire, um, I always get on a brief Zoom call with someone that we hire on Upwork to do a quick training. Usually it doesn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but what I also like to do is send a Google Doc um, with just some basic information that they can come back to even after their training if they need to just sort of like realign before they're working. So I wanted to take a quick look at this with you. And this is not, you know, the end all be all for directions. And I will provide a copy of this in the course that you can, you know, copy this and, you know, make it your own. It's a good job jumping off point. So these are just a few things I mentioned to them to kind of get them on track. Um, the message format with to my 
blank from your blank is best. Examples, the more specific, the better. Um, you know, talking to them about having an adjective in front of the subject. One of the things I love about having a copywriter is being able to have someone to come up with other adjectives that you can split test in your titles that would have maybe not have, occur have occurred to you. Um, you know, it's not just like that they can provide new writing and new angles, but sometimes even something as specific as just a different adjective might be the difference in finding a, um, you know, a winner that you can scale. Maybe you have a great message, but you just need to tweak it a little bit in your testing. Maybe the adjective is what it needs. Um, the next thing I put down is just like talking about specificity and how, you know, we want the customers to resonate with the message. You know, they talk a lot about that in the shine on space. If they're crying, they're buying. Um, I really like to encourage our copywriters to ha to allow themselves to write about personal things to them. Um, you know, like I said, we sometimes your copywriter, maybe they have a ton of siblings. Great. Like have them write a lot in that niche because they're going to produce the kind of personal emotional writing that maybe if you're an only child, maybe you, you don't, wouldn't come up with that. Um, so I want to encourage them to do that. You can ask yourself who would be buying a necklace and who would they be giving it to? That kind of keeps them on track, right? You don't want someone writing a message to someone where it's like that would never even be a gift giving scenario. Of course, what I do with our copywriters, I'll send her a weekly list of like, these are the niches. So I want messages to blank from blank. Um, but this just kind of helps to give some general guidelines from the beginning so that they kind of stay on track. Uh, most of the jewelry is going to be given to women. It's mostly necklaces. Um, and then these messages are pr being printed on cards like the one below, so they can't be too long. I think it's helpful to show them at least one example of a shine on card so they kind of get the idea like, okay, we want to fill up this space. It needs to be like three to four sentences long, um, but we don't want it to go on and on and on. Um, so that's kind of just what I would start out with. Again, please make this your own as you're training people. In the next video, I'm going to touch on briefly hiring on Upwork someone who can work as like a template person in Canva to take your messages and pop them into templates that you've created. In addition to creating templates and having a signature deck that you can use for Facebook and having a different deck that you can use for Etsy if that's a sales channel that you use. Awesome. Thanks, guys.